Hi folks, I'm International Master John Watson, and this is Ask the Master on ICC-TV. Uh, the idea of the show is that you, the viewer, can ask questions. Uh, if you're on YouTube, we have a chat channel to your right at this point, and uh, if you aren't, if you don't see that channel, you might want to sign in to YouTube. It's easy enough to do, and uh, you'll be able to use that chat. Um, the idea of the show is to ask questions about chess and the chess world. I'm Jasmine Any McNair. sort of questions I you want the about Boys and Girls Clubs uh, of what's going on right now in the chess world, players, very much uh, fed off of the various kindness uh, that trends I in the chess world, strategy, the leaders at Boys how you might clubs. improve, so, uh, what's in um, the As a result of that, I'm probably going to be teaching like openings, and combining like I love games. for music with my and teaching. And lastly, so you can send your games and we also talk about books. I really liked when we got to go out and do gardening and then I any, really like any arts and chess and crafts world that we did. We had someone come in the, uh, and teach us bucket drilling, and I don't, and, I and still don't know why. I just found it like so cool. But everyone was just sitting in this little um, circle say, and just like bucket drilling. We would all get to take so turns. You know I really liked the cooperation that music required. The so easiest way to do all this is to send it so much. So it's about having those options and getting to like experiment with all those different things to figure out what it is that you really want to be centered on. After school impacted the success that I have. And we'll have throughout college. C -H -E -S -S -L -U -B After school work. S S C L U B dot C O M. Ask I am Watson at chessclub.com. If you send me that email, I'll have a little circle and just like bucket drumming, we would all get to take turns. I really like the change. cooperation that music requires. Yeah. Yeah. The easiest way to do all this is to send so much. So it's about having those options and getting to like experiment with all those different things to figure out what it is that you really want to make sure that I'm actually going to impact the success that I have had and will have starting with this game here, but let me check the chat first. Okay, my new L system. I need to switch over to the chat. C-O-M. Ask I am Watson at chess club. Com. If you send me that email, I'll have to send it. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Tell me if it improves, by the way. I'm now looking at the chat. Um, <laughs> Simul show. Yeah, I don't get it. It has. Try, just trying to think what this could possibly be. I have no TV things on. My sound is turned off on the computer that. My speaker is turned off on the computer that I'm using to broadcast. So there can't be any feedback there or anything being picked up. Um, amazing. So this is actually some strange reception. We should stop tr streaming. He thinks we should stop streaming. So nothing's gotten better. Ah, okay. That's because I turned off. Well, now I'll try to remember that next time. I turned off the internet on the computer that I'm using to stream from. Although there was nothing on the internet, there was nothing on the internet except this show, which I was monitoring. Now I'll have to use the other computer to monitor, but that's that's reasonable. I'll just have to flip back and forth like I did last week. Okay, good. Well, at least I know that. Very odd that there would be any sound at all there. It makes no sense whatsoever. Even a computer whiz probably wouldn't know wouldn't know what was going on there. All right, so I will um, switch then I, uh, to, okay, I'm on the chat now on the other computer watching you guys, and I think we've, we've pretty much, we pretty much, I pretty much caught up. There's, there's only Alan's question about rookie one in the main line of the Kings Indian. So I'll switch to the sort of the regular show, which means I've got to go back to the board here. Okay, on the board you see E4, C5, Knight C3, D6, right? So this is a this is a game I saw today. It's actually on our rival service, chess.com. Um, it's a game between uh, Grischuk and Vashir Lagrav, and it's a blitz game. And I thought I'd show you this real quickly first because it's kind of fun. Um, this is called the Grand Prix attack. And in fact, after the game, Vashir Lagrav challenged uh, Grischuk to play the Grand Prix against him in a normal classical game because he thinks it's not very good, obviously. Most professional players don't think much of the Grand Prix attack. Uh, maybe I'll mention something really f quickly that might be useful for you guys. Against the closed Sicilian, if you're a Sicilian player, I think this line is becoming increasingly popular and fits in very well if you don't want to give up the idea of playing um, a knight or, for example. You know, if they play here now or something, you can play here and you can get back into a, a dragon or a knight. Well, uh, I'm sorry, I can't get a dragon, but you can get a drag dwarf or a knight dwarf. Um, and the other idea is that you're going to play a quick b5. You might want to kind of look into that because the minute he plays here, then none of these Grand Prix ideas are going to work. Um, so it also sort of prevents the Grand Prix attack also from, from being any good. Um, just for example, something like, um, let me see, whose move is it here? Well, Black's move. And if, if white, if, if we get these sort of standard Grand Prix-ish kind of moves, first of all, there's no bishop b5, which is one of the variations of the Grand Prix attack. And after bishop c4, it's very important to have that square. Black has gained by having a6 in. White has done very little by having a4 in. So well, it does provide a retreat for the bishop, but still, it's um, definitely favorable for black. Just a little a little tip. You might look into that 2a6 move. Some people worry about the closed Sicilian. Okay, here he plays d6, and it's Vashir Lagrav. He's still hoping for a knight, or if he's going to play like, um, you know, this. He's going to do this sort of thing and play a knight or if he, that's all he plays. It's all he's played, I think, his whole life. And <laughs> so he'd love to get back into that. But uh, instead, uh, Grister kind of fools him with a Grand Prix attack, which is this setup. And this is the traditional Grand Prix attack where you just sort of try to mate black by bowling him over by playing d3, castles, queen e1, h4, a, f5, an early f5. OK, so black plays the normal move. White plays a normal move. And black plays another normal move. And this um, this is often answered by either f5 or d3, as I say, with the idea of playing queen over and up. And the fun thing is, even in a five-minute game, we get this very fun thing happening, uh, which is that um, Grischuk tries this move. I don't. I didn't actually look this up. I don't know what the uh, how how common this is. Uh, it's probably been played a few times, I imagine, but I don't think it's a major major line. Um, but I did sort of, you know, put it on the computer just to see what was going on. The main point is to show you how much fun uh, you can still have on the top levels with sort of crazy, crazy openings. 
And also it's possibly it's be a decent weapon for white. I don't think it's unsound at all. I think it may only be equal, but I don't think it's unsound at all. Uh, Vashir Lagrav played this, and I'm wondering already if that isn't just a mistake or, or a second best move. I think the best thing to do is play this, and I'm sure he thought to himself, well, it's very easy now to get that pawn back. I'll never have any sort of advantage. So it's not as though black is actually punishing uh, white with this. For example, black can't really go like, well, he can go like that, but then he can't take the bishop. And white just got his pawn back, and he can't take the bishop because of this check. So it's not as though there are any refutations here for black going this way. Black has to just play normally now. And probably the way play normally is just force things a little bit. Maybe take once um, and then play a simple move, some kind of slow move. Maybe knight f6 It's a possibility, just attacking here. And I'm pretty sure black's going to be reasonably happy with this. On the other hand, white's not unhappy. So that wouldn't refute the opening, but maybe a safer way of playing. For sure, Lagrave played that, which looks completely logical because it keeps the pawns intact, and white hasn't won the pawn back yet. And if white plays here, black's going to play check, and then it's going to be a long time before you get that pawn back. So white plays this move, which is the point, and black captures. Well, what else is he going to do at this point if he allows white to take and take? That's very awkward because these bishops are either going to come off, there's going to be pressure on the weak pawn down the file, so black feels obliged to, um, and this is probably too risky. It just looks awful because of the file. This can't be good. I guess takes knight g5, followed by taking, with the rook also coming down the file on the f7 square. Something like that. There may be something better, but it looks awful. So um, black takes and white takes. And what a fun position. White's a clear pawn down against a very solid pawn structure, a uh, very sound and logical pawn structure for black. On the other hand, white has, what, one, two, three, four, five pieces out, uh, and has, the, a lot of them are heading, they're all active, they're all very active. Black has only one piece out, and the rest of his pieces are, well, this one's blocked off, this one isn't even developed yet. So white has ideas like f5 just smashing through down to the f7 square, and he has ideas maybe like e5. He can also play things like just rook d1 and add pressure to that weak pawn there. So depending how you play chess and how you look at it, either Either this should be a really fakey attack that gives black no trouble at all, or it should be almost completely winning because look at the incredible lead in development. And that's sort of the structure versus activity balance. And in this case, the activity balance is probably is probably winning. And I believe this, this is not only sound, but that white's, I think, quite a bit better already in this position. Black plays uh, the natural move, which takes a look at that square and gets ready to castle. If black got one more move here, if white played slowly, I know this is a silly move, but um, and black castled, I now no longer believe that white stands that well because structurally black's so well off. Or he even could play f5 next, and against f5 he's got plenty of protection uh, against that square as opposed to the game. Now I don't know, white probably would still have some compensation, but you know, knight here, here is another idea. Maybe white could try g4 and break through, but this is not at all clear that black isn't just you know pawn up here. Um, but uh, white, black doesn't have a move, and white plays here. Now, what I noticed on the, you know, using the computer was that this is also rather strong, threatening f6. It's, it might even be better. It also threatens takes, followed by queen f7, check, followed by queen takes g7. And um, this is actually really tough, because what does black do here now? If black plays this move, white plays here, and there's no way to protect f7. Uh, black could give up a piece for two pawns, or in some cases maybe three. I guess in this case three pawns. And but white's still better developed. And I I looked at that, and it's it's not hopeless for black, but it's definitely better for white. Uh, if he takes this way, which seems more logical, I think um, I think the easiest way to do this is put up, put more pressure here, threatening things like bishop g5 and knight d5. And then it turned out there wasn't much to do here. Knight d5 is a, bishop g5 and knight d5 is a huge threat. But if he tries to stop it, it's just too slow because of g4. And things are going very badly here. So so this attack is kind of, well, I think Grister could have played here. Now it's a five minute game in a long, long blitz match. So he went, he went with something he'd already looked at at home, which was this move threatening uh, bishop c5 because this pawn is pinned. And black, I think, realized he couldn't take one more move and allow that attack, so black castled. So maybe rook ad1 wasn't quite as good as f5, but it's awfully good because now white got his pawn back. This is extremely weak, and white is attacking. 
So there's no real way to save that pawn. I think he was counting on this move, which seems to win a piece along the file, but, but on the other hand, white gets his piece back on e7. And in this position, white should probably just, you know, objectively come back, according to the computer, and I think it's right, should just come back, be a pawn up with a much better game. This is a passive bishop. White's very active. There's a threat of playing e5 and knight here. Maybe f g4 is good. I mean, this is just a great position. Um, he plays this instead, presumably possibly prepared. And, and, and I think he's assuming that uh, even MVL is not able to defend, even if there is a defense here. You'll see how illogical the defense is. There's no way you could find this in a rapid game, uh, I mean, a blitz game, especially a blitz game where people have already, um, where, where they probably blacks already used a lot of time because look, he's almost getting made in some of these lines. So he had to use a lot of time already. The idea is that after check here, white has this terrific attack. It's a fun game. And um, it turns out Black can actually defend this. Uh, I guess, I bet Gristrick actually knew that, but just thought, what are the odds he's going to find the right defense in, in, in this kind of time pressure? Um, he, he can play the amazing move <laughs> Rook there. It's really very silly. And then after check up, if, if White takes, Black has this bizarre move. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, it's, it's sort of defensible. It's not like Black's winning or anything, but, uh, and, and White has a, White has, of course, this uh, kind of a perpetual check this way, but maybe no better. <laughs> anyway, not surprisingly, MVL didn't play rook d7, which is a completely nutty move. Uh, he played here, which is very logical, unpinning and covering f6. White played knight f6. Now there's one more chance to play this silly move, rook d7. <laughs> but he didn't play it. He's probably completely out of time. He played there, very logical, to come back and defend the king's side. Um, and... Uh, uh, Gristrick played here, threatening this square. Black had to defend. White played here. Turns out this is maybe even just slightly more accurate, but at this point, White's pretty much winning anyway. Uh, playing here, threatening that, for example, as well as f5. Uh, Black played back to cover that square, and White simply doubled. Uh, just a complete crush here. Um, once again, rook d7 is probably the right move, even though there's three pieces on it, which is sort of ridiculous. Black could actually get a few chances. I'm not going to go into that, but believe it or not, he can sort of semi-hold there, whereas that wouldn't have worked against queen h4. So instead, he tries this move b6, and guess what? Takes. You can see this is an almost mate there, almost mate, and then what? How do we finish him off? You might want to stare at that for a second, think about it, and... Um, it's actually pretty simple. You could always turn this broadcast off if you're listening to it later, but uh, this move. And there's no stopping that checkmating idea. Queen takes queen, pawn takes mate. So that's really it. That's just completely finished. He resigned. He could, uh, the only way to stop mate would be this. And then the funny thing about that, I just thought I'd show you this because it's kind of funny. The funny thing is, rather than take this, which of course wins, but actually doesn't lead to mate very quickly at all, it turns out black can sort of sneak back. and. Uh, what white should do, if he's got a little guts and time, is, is exchange queens and then check. And, uh, and uh, if, um, if the king comes back now, check up and once again g4, and there's no stopping g5 checkmate. Because if g5, you just take it and it's checkmate. <laughs> and if he goes king up, uh, let me see, how could he do that? He could play king up here, but again, we have check, uh, takes. And now just simply king here, which has the threat of checkmate and also the threat of checkmate. So, it's, I mean, obviously that's silly. I'm saying don't take a queen when it's given to you. You probably just take the queen in a real game, but it's funny that it's made anyway. All righty, let me now, because of the fact that, that I had to turn off the uh, internet on the other computer, let me do a little switcheroo here and see what we're seeing. Um, Okay, let me go back to the chat. Sorry about this, but now I had the chat right in front of me. Unfortunately, that failed. Okay. What's the status of the G5 and the five of the four pawns? I don't know. Someone got away with it about a year ago, some top player, but I, I, I think it's still a little suspicious, but um, I'll do it for, I'll have to do that for next time, John, because I'd have to look it up. I do keep track of a lot of bizarre things, but since none of my students play the Alyekans and I haven't played it in 30 years, uh, um, I don't, I haven't, I'm just not sure about it. I did notice someone played it and, and actually won the game not that long ago, but I think if you know what you're doing, 
it's still problematic. One reason I think that is because I was looking at what to do for black, and I was looking at G6 ideas. I was thinking of taking up the Elyak, and again, just for fun, just to play some. And I was thinking, what do you do against the four pawns? Which, by the way, is unlike four pawns and other openings and kind of crazy large center, two large centers and other openings, uh, the four pawns attacking the Elyakin is still very hard to meet. It's quite a good move. I think it's one of the best answers, actually. Um, yeah, I'm red, huh? Oh, I'm getting uh, sun here. Well, I could take an, an instantaneous little break here and turn that sun off, couldn't I? I think I'll do that. Give me 30 seconds. Now that's power when you can turn the sun off, right? Okay, what do we have here? We have, um, so MVL got all, so, oh, I didn't turn it all off, it looks like. All I did is darken everything. Well, that wasn't so brilliant. Anyway, um, so MVL, let's see what we've got here. So MVL got all sucky on Grischuk. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 he threatened, uh, he dared Grischuk to play the Grand Prix in reality. I don't think Grischuk will take him up with it. So what about e4, c5, knight of 3, g3? Um, actually, I think most people play. Let, let's see that. Oh, God, I'll have to switch over. Let me look at the other chat first so I don't get too far behind, and I'll get back to that. Uh, it's a game, f4, f5, nasty. Be interesting if you could solve some chess puzzles. Um, yeah, it would be interesting. <laughs> no, I'm not that bad at it, but I'm certainly not a good uh, uh, puzzle solver. Uh, love them though. I think, you know, I think as I get older, problems and studies seem even more and more attractive. I don't think they're very useful. We've talked about this because they're just, the positions are so unrealistic. I don't think it has, it gets you thinking, it, it, it teaches you to think about the least probable move in the position, and maybe that's not a good habit for over the board play. Um, it's controversial. Some people think that studying problems helps. Green um, G5 check, there you go. Semi hold. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to do what you saw. I turned the sun off, more or less. I turned most of the sun off. How's that? Uh, how do we punish opponents playing weaker moves? Well, chess philosopher, as you sometimes do, you ask these great specific questions, but these general questions, it's pretty tough. Um, depends. How do you know it's weaker in the first place? Oh, it says you, if you know it's weaker. Uh, well, that depends why you think it's weaker. Um, if you think it just exposes the king too much, you might look for direct attacks. Look at your checks and your captures and your forcing moves. Uh, if you think that it's um, uh, if you think it's positionally wrong, then you should look at, look at things that uh, gain larger positional advantages and maybe squeeze your opponent. Uh, it's just too. I think it's a little bit too general a question to answer just offhand. Um, yeah, I mean, you punish them by playing good moves and, and therefore getting a big advantage and trying to win the game. I'm sorry to be so simplistic, but that's the, really, I can't think of a good answer to that right offhand. Hi, Jordan. Wow. So MVL didn't really play well against the Grand Prix. What should Black do instead? Yeah, we can, we can talk about that. Let me, um, let me go to the board now because I had a question first. I had a couple questions. One was, let me go back, <laughs> about... Um, Hmm. Oh, g3 after a6. Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, very good question by chess philosophers. I'm better on these specific things. It's easier for me to handle those. Okay, so let's go back. Um, hope everybody can see this. Okay, so I'm not talking about making this uh, this a6 move. I think against g3, you know, you just play b5. You play b5 against just about everything. After all, most, most Sicilian players want to play a6 and b5 anyway, so maybe it's not so. They're not going to be unhappy doing it at an early stage. And one idea here is that um, this move b4 can sometimes be useful because if you've played knight f6, for example, I mean, let's say white played, I don't know, knight here or something to keep an eye on that pawn and black played knight here. Uh, there's actually a threat of b4 followed by just capturing the pawn. So white's maybe being limited in his plans here and black can blast through with d5 in many lines. And I don't swear to you the exact positions that he can do that in and which ones he can't, but this would be one where it looks like he can. Uh, you'll notice the stops, this, the, 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 the normal plan of playing f4 seems a little slow here. Again, I think I'd play here. This pawn is pinned because the bishop's hanging. And you're threatening b4 followed by just bishop takes, winning a center pawn and basically winning the game. 
So, um, so then in this position, again, you don't really have to play a normal closed Sicilian position like that, although I'm sure it's fine. Uh, but you can try to be more ambitious and play here. I've noticed that the good players that are playing this have a tendency to play for d5. Um, I wonder if you could even play d5 right away. That looks very risky, doesn't it? That looks bad. That just looks flat out bad. So maybe, maybe a move like that. Anyway, it's very nice to have this extra queenside space and be able to play b4 and all that. Um, well, how to play against the Grand Prix normally? Well, see, I never had that the same problem because what I always did uh, in the Grand Prix was I was always playing with E6 systems without D6. I never worried about having to have the move D6 in the way MVL did. MVL sort of needs to play that to be part of his repertoire. But since I was an E6 player anyway, and I've played, for example, a lot of times I played the time it off and things like that, um, I was happy with, with these kinds of Sicilians. And um, I usually played E6 on the second move, as a matter of fact. Um, or in the, uh, in the, what do you call it, the, um, the French, oh, sorry, the knight f3 is the first move. I would often play this with the idea that if they played the Sicilian, I'd play here, for example. Um, and then, and then let me just show you, um, since I'm used to e6 systems, I was perfectly willing to play knight c6 or e6. Let's do this. Let's play, let's play this first. You could play e6 first. That's one of the main lines. Um, and then I would just go into this, but the difference is, is that now the bishop c4 lines really, I think, are much worse. I think there's a big difference. People act like there isn't that much difference, but the, being able to block that off immediately and often get d5 with tempo and stopping f5 one move more quickly with this is extremely handy. I've always thought these attacks for black were very, very, very fishy. For white are very, very, very fishy. If you've wasted the move d6, it's not as easy. Because that gives white one more move to pursue his attack. And it also means that if black does play d5, which he often does in the d6 lines, he spent two moves doing so. Whereas in our positions, we can do it in one move. You know, something like this or something. I'm not, no, I didn't have white play f5 intentionally because I didn't want to show a bunch of nonsense. But, but um, in those f5 lines, we've basically gained a tempo also. Okay, so if you play d6, though, let's think about it. Uh, we, you know, a lot of people are going to have d6 in and e6. And what you normally do, of course, is uh, you just play normally, just the way Vashir Lagrave did. You go here, here. You might play f5 at some point, blocking off white's attack. And good players of black know all these main lines. You want to delay castling. Usually play here. And then um, if he plays a slow move, you play h6 to kind of discourage that. Otherwise, you're going to be, in, if you castle, you're really castling into it. I think we talked about this, actually, because you've got queen h4 and bishop h6 and all that sort of thing. Um, and this is a, a pretty safe, pretty safe line. I like to play h6 next anyway. Um, if white plays, uh, what else can white do here? Let me think. If white doesn't play f5, well, white's probably going to play f5. That is the main theme of the whole of the whole opening. So that's what you do. Unfortunately, he ran into this bizarro move, and I think already this is probably a mistake. I would love to be white here. I just think I think this is a, a terrific position. So as I explained, I think the the positional problem with this line is, the, is this one, and I don't think black's better at all after this move, and I did look at it on a computer briefly, but I think he's f completely equal. I think I just gave a line, didn't I? I think I gave um, this, takes, 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 and knight f6. So that's how you would meet the Grand Prix d4 idea and and otherwise the d6 e6 line is holds up reasonably well but it's hard to, harder to play than just e6 by itself much harder to play if you want to sort of keep that in mind okay we got a question about um let me go back to the chat by the way first uh, um let's just see here uh What's the current status of the dragon and opposite guy castling and queen a5 for black? There are people better, uh, better, more expert than I am to, to uh, explain that. I think if queen a5 is well timed, it's okay. But otherwise, the knight b3 lines with king b1 are a little better for white. Maybe, maybe if you delay queen a5 some. I think the main queen a5 lines are not in great shape now. The, the lines that you play now, let me just show you real quick. I show everybody what you're even talking about. Uh, this is the dragon. This is the dragon Sicilian. This is a Sicilian defense dragon for black. Supposedly because 
This pawn structure resembles a dragon's tail or something. That was amazing, amazing imagination to think that. But at any rate, um, <laughs> so uh, the line he's talking about goes like this. And F3, it's the uh, sort of the Yugoslav attack idea of playing this move, bishop c4. And uh, <laughs> it's usual, I'm going to have all these memory problems because I never really look at the dragon very much. But, but one of the traditional ways of playing is to play with an early queen a5. The way that people are playing now, a lot of them anyway, is to play with knight takes and b5 ideas. For example, here, here I think Topalov originally played this a lot. That's a, that's a pretty good line. The traditional Soltis variation, so-called Soltis variation with h4 and h5, um, you know, these moves come in, is considered also okay for black, this kind of position. But you follow it up with, um, with the normal moves here and here. You don't play queen a5. I think what happened to the queen a5 lines, one of the ideas of the queen a5 lines was to play um, the, this rook over to c8. And my impression is this king b1 ended up giving... Um, black problem. So I think the way that went was, <laughs> watch me get this wrong. Uh, you can play king b1 right away, I believe, but you can also play knight back, queen back, and maybe now king b1. I think this this position um, is considered, white gets a lot of good chances in these positions. You'd have to ask somebody else um, to verify. You'd have to uh, look it up, actually. Chess Publishing has every month Chris Ward talking about these things. And there's recent Dragon books and uh, DVDs. My impression is Queen A5 is, is doing very poorly, and unfortunately I can't tell you exactly why. It may also be that Bishop here and King B1 is good. Just plain like this, that this is doing well for white also. Um, and you know, black used to sacrifice a pawn with this, and I don't think that pawn sacrifice is working. In fact, I don't think it's worked for years. I think um, I remember seeing Jack Peters play this a bunch of times this wide, and I know maybe not this exact one. I don't want to throw that on him, but maybe it wasn't this exact system, but but doing very well. That's just my superficial answer. Basically, we'll have to look it up. Maybe I'll look it up for next week for you. Um, sorry, I don't know more about that, but I think I, I'm almost sure you'll find Queen A5 is not as good as the other systems. Why is the most important question in chess? Is this the O'Kelly? Not really. No, the O'Kelly is, uh, is is after knight f3, so there's no f4 in. Does that make sense? Two knight f3, a6 is the O'Kelly. So it's very different in character because in the Grand Prix system, you've got this f4 move happening. Or or knight c3, or in the closed Sicilian, you have knight c3 already committed. So it's not really the O'Kelly. Um, okay, let me see what else we have in the chat. The lines are too crazy for me to analyze. Uh, the lines in which opening the a6 lines or the wait a minute let me see oh here we go faust oh yeah i don't blame you for being too crazy there's you know 50 years of theory and supercomputer analysis and correspondence games where they take three days to find a move and oh it's just horrible i i, I tend to avoid these and i tend for, for to have my students avoid these major 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 lines it's great if you love them and but i i sort of i always kind of keep it up to the to if the student wants to do it i just say okay you know good i'll look at it we'll criticize it but you'll have to do most of the work because um uh if you aren't motivated to study these lines you're um you're probably not going to play them very well and you really need to you you need to know them very very specifically okay um we haven't done anything of the stuff that we're going to do today, except for the uh, Vashir Lagrov game. Um, last week we talked about Hamp Meitner. So I'm going to switch back to the board. Sorry that I'm not going to see the chat in the meantime. Uh, percentage 326. We talked about this Hamp Meitner um, game. There we go, from the uh, 1870, it turned out it was. So I went and I looked it up. Remember, I was asked about this position. And I mentioned that there was this great famous game with knight a4, bishop takes f2 check. Oh, and by the way, um, Anderson, who was one of the greatest players of all time and undoubtedly knew about Hamp Meitner because it was later, played this in one game. And I think that's actually very clever because what's the knight really doing out there? And the bishop is f fairly useful here. And I think what white would do is go here and then black has a nice choice. He can play either a Philidor which is not usually the most inspiring opening, but in this case, maybe maybe here, for example, um, in this case you have, or even taking is possible, 
you you have and now none of these bishop f7s and knight g5 things work very well so especially because you've got an extra tempo over there and so what you get you get one of these filters really a whole tempo up because the knight's going to have to come back again you've only lost one move playing bishop c5 e7 he's lost two because he's going to have to play knight c3 if one thing you can force him to play it with a6 or c6 threatening b5 so that'd be fun and the other way you can play it as black is allow some sort of scotch game uh, which would go something like this and this isn't as bad for for um, white as i thought um, because you've already committed your bishop here you're not going to put it on g6 or anything so this this kind of thing is a little unclear for example after that if you played here it's still the move e5 is still kind of interesting this position is not not you know this is a whole tempo down in a way a, a normal position because white has this move knight a4 in and black has this move bishop e7 which looks much more useful, but actually is not all that great. Uh, you could easily play some end game like this. It's probably just equal. You have two bishops. It's a little like the Berlin Rui Lopez. The big difference though is white hasn't committed to this, in which case black would be actually better. White white should just play slowly. So, so I mean, I was looking at this and thinking about a lot of this, but, but uh, that's just an aside. I don't know why. Just so you know, if you want something as black and you don't want to take this draw, remember this is a drawing line for black. So anyway, that game, this is what how Hamp Meitner went. Vienna in 1870, if you want to look at it. And there have been maybe 30 games since then <laughs> with this. And, and as I was going to say later, one of the reasons that you see this uh, game played so many times is I think there's a lot of uh, people who are friends with each other or want to take a draw before the game, but don't want people to know that that's happened. Uh, and want to do it in a sense legitimately by not cheating. Uh, well, they are cheating, but they, but but uh, not, making reasonable moves and not having to play 30 moves, you can just play this game and then take a draw. Th this happened between um, a 2585 player and a 2570 player just recently in a tournament, just two months ago. <laughs> so uh, it was the Kavala opening, uh, Stupak Bortnik. And uh, they played this entire game that you're about to see. They played Hemp Meitner out move for move. Now, it's actually possible that they didn't, they were trying to test each other's memories and they were just goofing, fooling around with this and happy with the draw if necessary, but maybe hoping they'd get winning chances or something. But more likely they, uh, they essentially collaborated on this, on this draw is my, my theory anyway. So, um, so here it is. We looked at it last week. Uh, other things have been played, by the way, in all these positions. Let me, let me show you this one, for example. People have tried a lot of things to try it, for white especially. This is one of them. And then there's two ways to get a decent game for black, knight f6 or maybe capturing. I think knight f6 is the one that probably is the best. And on this you go here, the king starts moving, you go check, and uh, the king has to move over again. And then the queen kind of slides back over to the queen side. And this position, White can kind of run away by playing a3 and king a2, but black just keeps the pressure up. Let me show you this one. I'll just show you this one. He just leaves the knight hanging there because he has this move knight d4 check. So white avoids, white avoids getting mated basically by sneaking back to that square. And then black plays this cute little move because it turns out white gets mated anyway if he takes that piece. And then he sort of tries to break down this side of the board. Crazy, crazy stuff. Anyway, black eventually comes out better here. Let me see if I can show you a couple more moves here. He's still a piece down, by the way, but um, the king is just too exposed. Knight back. Um, now that knight takes c4 is a real issue. Um, queen e4. And takes, 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 bishop b7. He's getting some material back. And the king is still exposed along the b file, and you're getting most of your material back. And you have that gorgeous knight there. I mean, white has to play something like knight f2 at some point and allow that. And then look how passive these pieces are. So it's almost even materially, and at the same time, I think black has even an extra pawn. So two pieces for a rook is better for white, but um, still, this is very good for black. Okay, I won't go into more detail, but it's kind of fun. I mean, there's all sorts of crazy things that can happen in this line. Uh, but the famous game went like this. I think I showed it to you last week up to a point, and then, of course, I forgot where I was. So that threatens queen b4. So white stops that. But then you have this sacrifice. White was thinking, oh, I'm going to get away now. I'm going to play knight c3, and I'm going to play king e, uh, back to back to a2. Notice he couldn't play knight c3 first because of this mate. So 
So this all goes back many years and was played several times, a couple times in the 19th century, but actually in a, a whole bunch more later by people who probably already knew the game. But who knows? So now check. It really looks like White should get away, but he simply doesn't. That's a nice little slow move, threatening threatening b3. Notice there's no retreat. There's no way to get out for, for the king. But it also turns out Black doesn't have the firepower to checkmate, especially if White makes that nice move. And black moves. Now there's a threat of mate in one. So white plays this nice move, uh, giving himself a little bit of room. Black plays there. White plays there. Now white's hoping to get out this way, but black captures that. Now the king really isn't going to get out because if it goes this way, there's this nice knight move with b5 coming or bishop d7 or some, some other mating idea. And uh, that means that white really has to be greedy and take this. And then black plays this nice move, and white. And if white takes that, black can simply move up. And then actually, there's one more check, isn't there? So check here, and then mate next move with here. I mean, unless white plays this check or this check. Uh, at any rate, so that would be a disaster after all that work that white's king has done. So white should come back here, and now white's going to get away unless black repeats. And the problem is white can't move up because now this move threatens this mate here to which there's no decent reply. Isn't that fantastic? A great game, great classic game. So I was asked about bishop c5 last week. I thought I'd show you that. Uh, they also, I was asked about this game, Kasparov Karyakin. I wanted, I think that's also fascinating. So we'll take a look at that. But before I do that, let me switch back to the chat. Uh, I don't know about El Greco, but Greco played a lot of games. <laughs> El Greco did a lot of great paintings. <laughs> Wonderful paintings. What a what a terrific artist El Greco was. He's maybe a little underrated in uh, in, in art history. I'm not sure. Um, wh what is the most? Why is why the most important question in chess? I don't think why is the most important in chess uh, question in chess. Um, but that's just my opinion. I think often knowing why a move is made is really great. But unless it's tied with a lot of specific variations and things, sometimes it doesn't mean very much. In other words, if, if you're told why you make some moves well to grab the center or, or control the center, then the next three games you try to control the center and you get checkmated, the, the why hasn't really helped you very much, at least in the abstract, the verbal why. The, the answer in terms of actual, this is what your opponent would do and you don't have time to counter it, is, is, a more, is, is another kind of why that is very important. Uh, okay, the dragon question. I have a super important question for the King's Indian, though. Can I post a variation? Absolutely. You can post it here, or you can send to askimwatson at chessclub.com. I'm sure you have email, A-S-K-I-M-W-A-T-S-O-N at chessclub.com. Um, should be a good World Series if I was betting Dodgers in five. That's a very unusual prediction. The Dodgers are picked by more experts, but usually in six or seven. Six is a very common doctor, uh, Dodgers prediction. Um, I don't think anybody says in four. <laughs> uh, five would be pretty extreme. I mean, the Astros have had have many, many good things going for them, including Verlander, <laughs> and not to mention the best batting average in the entire leagues for the whole season, uh, the best hit, hitting generally by a fair margin. I've been hearing some streamers recently say Black has problems to solve in the exchange French. They all seem to play knight of three next. If problems unsolved, I would guess you would know. No, I mean, I don't think Knight of Fight 3 is giving any black any serious problems, but it's a challenge. I mean, it's something you have to know. You have to know how to play against Knight of 3. I like Knight C6 and then Bishop D6 for black. Status fine for this line. Not as many people are playing that anymore, and I can explain that wh why that's true, but let me first see what else people are saying. Yeah, I'm just kidding, Jonathan. I think yeah, I knew that. Yeah, it's Greco, a great player, greatest player of his time. I'd love to show you a Greco game, maybe next week. I have a question about the King's Indian defense. What about the line with knight f2 without the bishop moving at all? Uh, you're going to have to be more specific. Why don't you give me the moves to that? I don't know. I assume you mean knight f3. Uh, boy, I'm not even sure if I can assume that. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I posted it here so the viewers can see. I don't know what that means. Did I miss something? I, I, I don't think I missed that, did I? Someone tell me if I missed that. Um, if why isn't the best question, then what is that? <laughs> that's, a, that's, a good, that, that's a good question. Um, what's the best question in chess? That's, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> um, 
Hmm. Oh, wow. Yikes. Oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'll have to think about it. Maybe maybe this makes Y sound like a better answer with the fact that I can't come up with anything. So I'll give you credit for that one. But uh, um, time goes too quickly. Oh, really? Well, I'll go longer. I, I was really short last time because of the technical difficulties. We can go a little bit longer. Yeah, I can, I can turn the sun off. So, I mean, that's exactly, John. You got it. I did feel like a superpower, uh, superpowered individual there. Um, yeah, I don't see it. Sorry if you double post. We we, don't, we haven't even seen it once. I'll tell you what, Faust, though. Uh, send me any questions by uh, email. Ask I am watching at chessclub.com. Let me show you the Kasparov um, Karyakin that I promised I would show last week. Um, <laughs> Got to get back to this board somehow. Here we go. And I, let me put this game up. Because we were talking about the King's Gambit. It'd be so much fun if more and more people played the King's Gambit. So Kar Karyakin played it against Kasparov. It turned out this was a game from only a couple of months ago in the St. Louis Blitz tournament that Kasparov sort of came back in. And um, uh, Kasparov is white, and he played the King's Gambit. And um, he played this crazy move. Very, very rare, actually. It's similar to the Steinitz Gambit, or can turn it, can transpose into the Steinitz Gambit, but, uh, but gives black more options. And it allows this move. Now let me go back for a second and show you what the Steinitz Gambit is, or at least officially, more or less, what the Steinitz Gambit. That's playing the Vienna game first, and then if knight c6 playing here. And then after taking, you play, instead of playing knight f3 to stop queen h4 check, you play this move d4, attacking the f4 pawn, and after check, you move up with the king. You'll see this theme in the game I'm going to show you anyway, so it's I'm not going to describe it in detail, but, but the idea is you're going to gain a lot of time by attacking that queen. And we mentioned that last week in the context of the bishop's gambit, which I think is a better opening than the Steinitz. I think the Steinitz is extremely marginal. Um, but the same thing can happen in this position. And this version, not surprisingly, if you look at it, is a little better for white. Well, maybe it isn't obvious, but it's a little better for white than the, um, than the Steinitz gambit variation. Um, and in fact, I rather like this position for white. I think you can do a lot with it and have a lot of fun with it. Um, okay, so that was just that's just sort of an overview of these King's Gambits and the orders because they're a little confusing because of uh, the Steinitz Gambit has been analyzed in incredible length. I think there's a DVD on it even with, and it's been played in thousands of games and and uh, but it's got there are a few lines that just you know give it give it uh, a lot big big problems. I think the best version for white of the Steinitz Gambit. I mean, one thing that Block often does is just immediately plays that move. And I think if white plays knight takes, which is the most natural move and the one played most often with the idea of bishop here or knight here, I think you find that he gets just massacred in these lines. It's just too much pressure. You know, he, he shores up d4, but then you hit him with this move and you start smashing him here and here. And we used to analyze this a lot. And I don't think uh, white survives this position. And that's considered more or less a refutation, except that I think white can play here and uh, really be pretty equal. Um, it's even possible that um, that Black's best thing to do is actually just to retreat one of his pieces and and keep the king in the center and try to attack. But White's got nice. White's got a good center. It's true the king's in funny shape, but it's. I think this position's playable. It wouldn't be much fun though. Uh, and the other problem with this line, I'm sorry, there is a problem with this line, and maybe the main reason White doesn't play it in practice is that White's still playing for a win when he plays the Steinitz Gambit, and that's a problem. Can't go this way because of this clever little maid. I don't know if all of you have seen this before. And um, essentially has to go back again. And then you have this check. Now you can play here and then sneak over this way. That's an interesting line. Uh, but it's interesting for black too. I think black's fine there, but it's interesting. Uh, and you can also just go back and repeat because you don't have any real option in this position. So um, just for a little background, and maybe I'll maybe I won't go any. <laughs> I was going to show you more of that theory, but we don't have time, as someone pointed out. We're kind of short here. Okay, so in this game, it was a regular king scam, but with knight knight uh, c3 now, black checked, white played here, and white came back, which is a very unusual move, but it has been played. It was played twice in the 19th century of all things, 
and I have those games, and they're they're kind of interesting. Uh, Karyakin played this. I'm not sure why. He probably was aware of the move. Um, probably has never studied this too seriously, but knows that the, the reason is you're going to move it back anyway. Why not wait to see what white does, and then um, and then react react accordingly rather than commit to one of your pieces. Uh, this move is is I think quite interesting. Again, this just d5 move. Uh, I don't know if you actually get an advantage, but it's been played. Uh, Johnny Hector played this. Um, this kind of position has worked out pretty well. Even even this is even Bishop B4, uh, Bishop G4 check, and then Knight A6 has worked out. I don't know though. I think maybe we're still in the game here for White. It's not it's not like you're worse necessarily. Something like this has happened. Let me just show you. It'd be nice if you could play all of this, but. Um, yeah, that's why I think actually bishop g4 check yeah, should have happened earlier because here I think white might even be able to claim a tiny advantage just because these guys are so weak. A position like this, I think you can actually bring the king over this way and try to claim some small advantage. So there are prospects for white here. There are interesting things white can do. Anyway, so black instead came straight back and white played d4 that was given an exclamation point by somebody there is a difference between that and knight f3 but i wouldn't swear by either move i'd probably play knight f3 actually okay so this tends to be a good move this counter in the center but here i don't think it does much more than equalize uh, the simplest way for black to play is this challenging e4 and d5 hang on to this for a while and maybe he's even going to play g5 next and because the king is so awkward, uh, white's advantages, which are the big center and fairly free piece, possibly potentially free piece play, are pretty much counteracted by black having nice activity. Um, you know, this kind of position. Because because black's going to actually play g5 here, probably. Okay, um, what else? You could play g5 right away. Oh, yeah, the, two games in the 19th century and early 20th, I guess, uh, went g5 in this position which is a terrible move because now there's no way to hold your pawns together on the king side one game went like this and this is very awkward because uh, not only is white um, black losing time because that's an important piece but but uh, white's developing in the center and this pawn can't be defended permanently on the other hand well pushing's bad because you just take that and how did the other game go oh, d6 and there was a miniature after d6 I'm going to show you anyway. Miniatures are fun, right? Check here. I'll try and do this quickly. Uh, queen takes g5. Knight d5, threatening knight c7. Check. Knight a6. Uh, bishop takes f4, which was the other threat after knight takes d5. Queen g6. King f2, getting the bishop. Threatening bishop takes a6, followed by knight c7. Uh, queen takes e4, double question mark, although black's already probably close to lost anyway. Bishop b5 check. Whoops. And now rookie one's coming. Next move. Even if white play, even if black plays here, rookie one works because if the queen moves away, you have mate. So there we go. 19th century chess at its best. <laughs> this is why they call them the open games. <laughs> you must wonder sometimes why e4, e5 never leads to an open game. It's because... And, and they, they call it an open game. That's because the defenses have gotten so sophisticated. You, <laughs> it's almost like e45 is a closed uh, a closed game now. But um, anyway, okay, cute little game. Let me get back to the chat, just see what people are saying. Uh, okay, oh, once again, we're talking about this uh, rookie one game that Alan was talking about. And we can look at that. Why don't you send me that game, Alan? And we can take it. There's a great Spassky game in the King's Gambit. This classic game. There are a couple great King's Gambits, yeah, which I haven't seen in a long time. So I'd have a lot of fun. I'd have a lot of fun with those, and so would the readers. Oh, all of a sudden we're getting a bunch of questions. Hang on. Yeah, I can turn off this. <laughs> Thank you, John. I'm getting a good reputation here. Yeah, call me up if you want some climate climate change. Who is the best player of all time? Might be the best question. That's well, a fun question. Everybody loves it. You know, people are very down on that question because it's impossible to answer and you can't compare players across uh, the ages and times. And that's absolutely true. It's it's almost like an illegitimate question, but it's great fun to talk about. Everybody has their list. We should talk about it at some point, maybe on the chat. Just people can come up with their list or they can send me a list and I can challenge it. Um, I think my list is a little unusual, actual, but, uh, actually, but, uh, but some of the top guys are, are kind of to be expected. Uh, great Spassky game, King's Gambit, uh, variation of the King's Indian, yeah. 
Oh, okay. So Faust is explaining now. It's uh, the main line with knight e1, d3. You never move the c1 bishop. Yeah, the old one. Well, usually you move the bishop to d2 in that line. Uh, you go f3 and knight f2, so black can never get g4 in. Um, I'll have to look at it. I, I actually suspect that black can get, uh, probably probably can get g4 in. Also, the timing's a little funny. Are you, usually black doesn't play f4 until bishop e3 has just been played, or white's done something else after the knight e1, d3. In other words, usually after knight d3, the position's still fluid in the center. And so black isn't necessarily going to play f4. Black might play f takes e4, e4, for example, and then knight f5, d4, or something like that. So, well, maybe I should show you this. Uh, I don't know if that's important. Oh, we'll never get to anything. All the things we were, that were asked, mm, sad. That's my time management issue. Here's a question on the Milner Berry. But as long as we're talking about this, I guess I'll give the chat priority. Only fair, I guess. Um, Here's the King's Indian. He's talking about these mainline King's Indians that have been played for countless years and um, asking a question that I don't for sure know the, the answer to, but I'd have to, I'd have to take a good guess at it. It's this old main line with um, knight c6 and coming back, the so-called Mar del Plata. White plays here, black plays probably knight d7 in most cases. I, I think the boy, I think 98 lines are very fascinating against the bayonet and the classical and all kinds of other things. Um, now that's a very common move with the idea of playing here, and then you get this this thing. What he's asking is, what about the move with what about the lines with 90? Oh, I'm sorry, folks, I, that happened uh, involuntarily. What happens with the lines with 93 where White doesn't play uh, Bishop e3? And I'm sure we have experts watching that actually know the answer to that question. Let me see. Um, so here we go again. Sorry about that. So 91, the idea is to free the F pawn and to play knight d3 because knight d3 supports the move c5. What, that's, what, that's what white is trying to do is attack this pawn chain. Uh, and then black plays here and white defends uh, the pawn chain. And now often black will play here now, right? Does black usually play f4 immediately? I have this odd idea he doesn't usually play f4 quite yet. I don't know if it's going to make any difference. Uh, someone want to tell me on the chat? Is that more common than knight f6 immediately? I remember knight f6 immediately being a more common move order. I think. I think that's right. But, but you're right, a lot of people do play f4 here. So the question is, why not play knight here fast? You're going to have to play h3 anyway, otherwise there'll be a pawn sacrifice with h5 and g4. Um, okay, so let me think about this. I guess the idea is A, the, the knight is not supporting c5, so it's gonna take you forever to get c5 in. Black might be even, even, even able to play c5. So that means black has all the time in the world in a position like this. So that's the first answer, is that knight's very useful there and the bishop's very useful on this diagonal. So you kind of hurt your queen side attack. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, if black doesn't have g5, g4, and then maybe it doesn't matter. I've got all the time in the world to play something on the queen side. Um, on the other hand, black might be about equal on the queen side to white if white can't even remotely get um, his pieces aimed over there. This bishop is blocked off. There's no bishop aiming that way and there's no knight. The other question is, are we sure you can't force that move through anyway? The g4 move, even at the cost of a pawn. I assume you're going to play h3 at some point. I don't know, maybe one of the rook... Ah, you know, that's another possibility. Uh, you, you always have to watch out in these lines that there isn't one of these rook lift lines. Like, and, and I'm gonna just fake it here because I'm not making the best moves maybe, but that something like this doesn't happen. I don't know if you're gonna throw a6 in. You might throw a6 in or something. But that eventually something, these kinds of moves don't happen. You know, white's playing like this and black's playing like this. And then after the queen up, then you're gonna have all kinds of sacrificial ideas on the king side. That's one possibility. Boy, we need Dave Vigorito here or something or, or Catronius or somebody. I'm not sure. That could be one issue. The other issue could just be the blast through issue, which is you put one knight here, you play F, you play H5, you play one knight here, you play the other knight over to H6, you play the rook to G6, that kind of thing, or maybe the queen to G6, and you play for G4 anyway on the grounds that you've got a ton of time on the queen side before white can do you any damage because these three pieces are not collaborating on the queen side. So that's kind of my guess. I will look it up for next week. It's a great question. 
Uh, but I would just say it's passive enough that maybe that's why white isn't playing it. And maybe he, maybe he can't permanently stop g4. I think my rook f6, h6 idea probably is not the answer. But I just thought of that as a possibility. Okay, what else do we have here? We have um, chat, 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 chat. Yeah, the bishop can go to a3, but it takes forever. Because what are you doing with c5? You need, you need to have your knight over there on c4. You need extra pieces over there to attack d6, for example. So, okay, so you get a4 and b4 and c5. You're, that's a bunch more moves. But it's a good question, and you may be right, actually. I shouldn't say that I know the answer to this, but I, I suspect that's the problem. You don't have enough queenside oomph. You know, you get all the way to c takes d6, so what? So what's it doing? Uh, what, what, what's it achieving? Um, it's my guess, anyway. Another more relevant question. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, oh, someone checked Aroni, uh, uh, Catronius. This is great. I'm going to skip the other. The line's not included in the book. Okay. Um, no, great question, Faust, actually. And I will check that out. I'm curious about it. Sam Collins recommends the 98 lines versus the bayonet and knight d2. Yes, I think I think that's those are pretty good lines. And even the old main lines, if you time 98 a certain certain ways, it can be quite a good move. Or better better than its reputation, let me put it that way. Because it looks wrong, and yet there's interesting things about it. Um, oh, your list. Okay, and we will do that. Uh, we'll maybe start talking about that next time. Uh, French exchange, show difficulty. Okay, well, let, let me do that. Um, oh, thank you for you knight f2, only knight f2 if black plays f4. Probably some of you King's Indian fanatics will know something about this. Let me answer since I didn't, well, there's the French, there are a couple things to look at here. Let me, um, and then next week I'll get to some of the things that were sent me. I was asked questions about the Milner Berry. I have a game to show. I have questions about the English Rosalimo variation. And just keep sending me things. I will try to be more efficient and get to more of them next week. But we've got a little time. We're going to go over a little because we wasted so much time last week. Uh, let me get back to the board and look at maybe the French exchange really quickly. Um, yeah, oddly enough, I would say most people aren't. I've kind of gotten a little bit away from the knight. This is what Kasparov played, knight f3 and c4. People got, I think they've gotten a little bit away from that line. Um, uh, recently. A fair number of people are playing knight of three, but they don't follow with c4. Yes, you can play this. This is actually very interesting because um, you would think white, white is playing a system that black has a reasonable amount of fun with in the exchange French. But like so many other openings, it's sort of like white has to commit to something. So this variation is often it involves giving up a pawn for black. But um, if white plays slowly, it's just very hard for him to make progress. You just make normal moves and castle and everything's fine. So white usually tries to attack in these positions by playing c4. For example, castles, knight here, c4, and then black takes this and it looks like white might be winning something, but he isn't because you have the counterattack and then you have another counterattack. So this is sort of a main line, this position here. And white can often pick up these two pawns, which means that he, um, and, and has a better game positionally in any case, but black has a very dynamic game. Black's, it turns out that black has, well, he has two bishops and will often get an attack going. One a very sort of well-known theme is to go here and then depending whether this is pawn is still here on c4, uh, sometimes black can play rook b4 over to g4 or rook b5 over to some square over there like h5 or f5. And all of a sudden there's an awful lot of pieces aiming this way, and there might be a knight that comes up that way, and uh, queen. so black can have a lot of fun in the knight c6 line, to answer your question. On the other hand, how does it stand theoretically? I'm not so sure, because white tends to be a pawn up, because of all black's weak pawns. He eventually hoovers up some of these pawns. Um, so it's, a, it's a slightly risky to play this way, uh, but certainly playable. I think, by the way, bishop uh, b5 is the most dangerous move by far, because if you play a move like this, a natural move like that, then you're running into bishop g4. There's already a threat on that pawn. Knight takes pawn. This is a slow move. Black can play here. Black might think about castling queenside. This is well known. This is all in my Play the French books, the early ones. I don't think I have this in my most recent book because I, I suggest different things against um, against knight f3. But uh, so yeah, so in a way knight c6 has one good point, which is it discourages the c4 lines because that just makes this a somewhat weaker um, somewhat weaker pawn. So black can do a lot of things here. I think I used to play bishop before, check here, and just try to commit white. 
and then uh, for example play here and you can get a main line here there's a very well-known line that goes something like this 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 castles castles bishop g4 now threatening maybe to take and take uh, white goes here black should come back in these positions usually although this exact position he has a choice of playing takes and maybe take here so actually maybe white's timing was weird here i should have done maybe slightly different timing Actually, this position, white would play here. And now I, I, t I like in my book, I give this move rook b. This position, by the way, can come up a million different move orders. Not even, not even the French defense. It can come up with other openings, believe it or not. I think the Petrov and maybe a couple other openings. Anyway, um, this position you can play, I think, eight moves. And maybe, maybe four of them, I think, equalize. Uh, but the one I think is the nicest is this. And the reasoning for that move is that uh, if you try to win this pawn immediately... The fact that you have a weaker pawn structure here actually does hurt you a little bit. I'd rather be white here. Not by much, but by a little bit. Um, you're also attacking that bishop. Might even, be a, might even be a serious advantage. So, but if you play rook b8 and say white tries to get the same kind of position, whoops, he doesn't have queen takes um, b7 anymore. So, so rook b8 is an interesting move. It also helps because there's a lot of variations where you want to play b5 and control light squares. The whole theme here is to control light squares. Let me, let me show you an example. Let's say white played here. Now, often, um, actually, you might be able to take that again, but, but let's pretend black took here. Now, black can always just come back to d6 or e6. In fact, he usually would. But this kind of position is very interesting here, where you attack that pawn, you're sort of attacking here, and then maybe you play b5. That rook b8 is coming in handy here because when the bishop goes somewhere, probably here, otherwise there's some nice problems with that move, um, you'll notice what's going on is that th these light squares are, well, black's got a lot of pressure on the light, <clears throat> light squares. He can even come back again sometimes. He can play a knight here maybe, or maybe this knight will end up coming back this way. Um, so that light square control and that output, those outposts for the knights on the queen side tend to make up for the fact that white has two bishops. Now remember, I really like two bishops, so I'm not saying black's better here, but I think this is a playable position, probably roughly equal. You give black a couple of moves, he's going to be much better because he's going to have a total bind on the queen side. Uh, this is a little weak too, you know, queen d6, rook b6, a6, you know, it sort of depends what happens next. There's a lot of options for white here, but um, I would say this is definitely a playable position and one that you can win in practice and maybe you will tend to win because it's hard for white to play. Even though white's fine, it's it's not easy for white to play. It's, to me, it's easier to play black in these positions because you have sort of obvious plans for your pieces. Okay, let me check the chat one more time. Um, and I can show you other answers to knight f3. You can look at my book too, play the French 4. I've got a couple solutions to knight f3 lines. Um, let me see what we've got here. Yeah, you can play, well, we mentioned that, a4, b5, and bishop a3, but it's sort of a big deal, right? Um, great line for white in the French, because in the main lines he doesn't get much. Well, I I guess I disagree with that. I used to play knight c3 uh, on the third move, because I was I think it gives you the best chances, actually. And the Tarash is more and more interesting. I wouldn't mind, uh, goodbye John Hartman, by the way. Um, and the Tarash is also very interesting for white. I, I guess I disagree. I think the exchange variation gives you absolutely nothing. And uh, the main lines create many, many problems for black. And that's why I played, when I was an e4 player, I played, I played knight c3. And I would be glad to play knight d2, since I know so much more about it now than I did in the old days. I'm sure black can probably equalize if he plays perfectly and if he plays the, you know, knows the positions perfectly. But he still has to play well, and there's always new ideas for white, new ways to try to make progress for white. So black has to not only be knowledgeable about theory, but has to also be good at playing, at adjusting and playing good moves. So, um, aha, so the chat's getting a little less crowded. I may have covered most things. Do I have time for one more thing? It's a bit late, isn't it? All right, so next week I'll get to some of you guys' questions. I have, uh, as I said, I've gotten some extra questions and I'd like to get more. I also have, um, I have a game that I was sent me and I will go over that too. We may even start with that next week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope you learned something, and if not, at least you enjoyed some of the games and and ideas. Um, wait a minute, what's this? Oh, yeah, Rookie 1. I'm sorry. I'll get to that next uh, next time, Alan, instead of 91. We'll, we'll talk about that. People play Rookie 1 in the bayonet, but they don't usually play Rookie 1 that early, and I'll, I'll think about why that probably is. 
All right. Okay, folks. Uh, thank you very much. Remember, ask I am Watson at chessclub.com. Think about your favorite players of all time. Maybe we'll get in a fight about that. It's always fun to talk about that. I, I don't care what anybody says. And uh, thanks, Jordan. And uh, let's uh, let's let's meet next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.